Well, hi, welcome to my video on how to change brake pads and discs. This one's specifically in Nissan Micra, but most cars are generally very similar. So, first you've got to jack the car up, which I've done to save time on the film. I've put an axle stand under there for health and safety. I know there's very lots of very health and safety conscious people around that like to see things done properly, and it's good as well to do it just in case the jack fails. So, just undoing the wheel nuts now. Quite big on a Nissan Micro, a lot of cars are small. Even bigger cars are smaller, they're 21mm on this, which is quite a big size for a little car. I always use this, this thing because it makes life easier for me. I've got myself a little magnetic tray here, which I always use to put the bits in. We'll see how long this takes. So basically, I've got this nice little car, it's 29,000 miles on the clock, so these are probably the original pads and discs. And I sold it to some little old gentleman around the corner, and he's asked me to do it for him because he felt the brakes were a bit vague. So let's see what they're like. Yeah, they're a bit rusted up because it hasn't been used for such a long time. It's done about 100 miles since the last MOT and it's nearly due again so they're literally rusted, rusted up okay so there's your disc and your pads are in here somewhere yeah and they're quite low so they needed doing anyway now what I've got to do is undo these two here which are the which are the the caliper and then the caliper carrier which are these two here and they look like they're about 12 mil so I might push the piston back first just to make it easier might might work might need a screwdriver in it the brakes don't to me don't feel too bad they're just where well, they're a bit rusted up so I always push the, push the piston back a little bit just to loosen it off. I'm not putting a lot of force on it, it's just just enough to make it easier to get the caliper off. That's always a good method in there, if we can get it in there. And you very gently ease it back. It's going well. Okay. Might do a bit more. So you're pushing it in then with the tool. I need to turn the steering wheel anyway, so that's good. Make it easier to get to the bolts. There we go. So, I think that's a 12. Very luckily I'm indoors. Hmm. 
tight that one. Put it around a bit more, I think. Reminds me of when we did the taps, Jeff. <laughs> I might need to get, get full pull on this. wonders for our sound quality. <laughs> right, that's the first one. Huh? Second one should be as old so I can push it. caliper off. Now, what you want to do really is support that somehow. Right, here's your pads. They're not too bad. They're, they're about half gone, I'd say. That one's better. So you slide out there. say on the MOT that they were getting low but I wouldn't say that with low in any shape or form. But you know what MOTs are like, they do like to get you to do stuff don't they? Right so these clips don't want to damage these because you don't get another set I don't think with the pads. They're just it's just there to reduce noise and to keep the pads tight. So that's the top one. That's it. So I'm going to put the top one that way round like that. So I'll know that how that goes. And the bottom one. It's always a good job if you've got a bad memory like me to put things in some kind of order because it makes it easier when you put it back together. Okay, let's put them on free and you can go like that so now I know which one goes which way round. So now we've got our caliper off, we need the hanger off which is these two bolts here. I think they're 17 mil, we'll have a look. But we need to support this first because we need to get something like a cable tie or something. Um, cable tie. Yeah, this is good preparation. That's right, this, ah. bit's, this bit's being cut. There we go. Preparation for me. This is the thing that I find hard is to 
It's a tricky little fiddly bit. Most things are alright, but the tricky little fiddly things can be a bit tricky and fiddly and they take a lot longer than anyone else. Can't really see what I'm doing. Doesn't help with the tape on the end of my foot either. <laughs> Me you. Oh, Where's the torch? I know the torch so yes. and I'm doing this. It's, uh, it's not that it's not that I can't see it, it's just like it's bloody useless of getting older for this. <laughs> Cable tie was long but I'd be alright. I should use the bungee, I normally use a bungee but first thing I thought was. Right, so hopefully I've got the cable tied the right way around. Yeah. Very fiddly. Come on. Don't like fiddly stuff. If anyone wants to watch me doing a cable tie for three hours. <laughs> they probably do. <laughs> I can speed up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah speed Without up. Without the sound, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, do speed the fiddly up. bits. Yeah, speed up the fiddly bits. This is all because of some little old man who didn't... <laughs> didn't <laughs> one of these brakes done. They didn't even need doing it. just needed cleaning up, but... Oh well. You gotta you gotta entertain these old deers, haven't you? Right, that's lovely. So now we've got that cable tied up there. That supports that. So now we find the next banner, which is I assume a 17, it looks like a 17 from here. Come on, come out. Yes. Right. Is it that one? Oh, is it, is it 17? Is it 17? Oh, come on. No. What? I'm sure it is. Yes, it is. Right. One needs a little bit of help to go on, I think. Blimey. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> this one would be sped up and all. <coughs> I normally cheat and loose them all off first. <laughs> Try and make it realistic. Oh, in here. It's actually lifted the car up. This can mess your spanners up, but mine are quite good spanners. Wow! I'm actually lifting the car. <laughs> If ever you get a nut, a, a, a nut that's that tight, just be very careful, get yourself a bar. And do that, what I just did. There we go. So 
sometimes that's the only way apart from heat. You don't really want to be heating stuff up. So there's one and done. Now this one I might find a bit easier, but then again I might not. We'll see. I can push against this one. Come on, get on there. Ah, oh, it's not fit maybe. There we go. <laughs> uh, take two. <laughs> Where's that come from? Get on there. Just a bit fiddly this one because it's up against something. the camera crew could pass it to me. <laughs> like magic I have a small hammer. Right, I might need my bar now because well on there otherwise you're going to bolt so you get that. there we go voila so this part takes the carrier off On there so that we know where it goes. That's that one. In case they're say different links in order at the top, there's your carrier. That's always a good idea to give it a good old wire brush as well. While it's off, you can find the wire brush. I haven't got a very good one, you looked everywhere for me. Solid, it just looks rusty. So now we're at the taking off the disc stage. Now in America they call these rotors. 
but over here we call them discs. And as you can see, the, the back's quite clean, but the front's a bit pitted, and this is from the weather and stuff, it gets wet through there, and because the car's been sat, the pad's pushed down on this, and this would eventually clean up, because that's your pad. That rubs there, and that's what causes the car to break. But um, the back one always pushes a bit harder because the piston pushes the rear one in and then it squeezes the whole thing together. So that one will always be cleaner than the front one to start off with. I reckon if you've done probably 50 miles it'll probably clean up but my customer requests brand new ones and that's what he will get. And that one. So. This is the part that always makes me nervous. Opening the box to make sure you've got the right pieces. So we'll go over here, all my new parts. I have some brake cleaner, which we'll use in a minute. These are New discs and the brake pads. Right, so first I'm going to open the brake pads and make sure that we've got the right ones. So, you can find something sharp. This particular company that I use, if you mess the box up, they get I'll see if you take them back. So, I will not name them Euro Car Parts Chichester. <laughs> very, very helpful lady. So, cut that off nicely. This is the nerve wracking Right, Have we got the right pieces? They look okay to me. Yeah, that's yep, that's the same. Just put them next to each other, make sure. Voila. God, they've actually sent me the right bits for a change. How amazing. No new clips though. Okay, so I've got the right pads. Now, have we got the right discs? Fingers crossed. Don't worry, I'm not one of these people that get offended by the word fingers. <laughs> it's a saying, fingers crossed. Doesn't matter if you use your toes. Ah, look, beautiful. They look about the right size, don't they? How could I ever doubt Euro parts? Perfect. Not like I've had any wrong deliveries this week, is it? Right, so we're back to here now, back to the hub. So before we reassemble, I'm going to give it a bit of a clean up. I need to find myself blue tissue. So we've got blue tissue. Use that carry bag to rest on. Nothing gets wet. A bit of brake cleaner is always good for, not very good for getting the cut, but it's good for getting just a little spurt. And we don't want to degrease anything, we just want. Now, this is the face that needs to be clean. It is quite clean. Got this, I'll stop any juddering or anything. Don't want any crap in there.
and nice and smooth. No high points. Okay, now another little friend when you're doing brakes is copper grease. Okay, we used to use this a lot. Now what you don't want to do is get any grease on the braking parts, the friction material, because obviously you won't stop. So it's always good though to put it on the back of things. So if I can find a little scrapey thing, I'll just get a little bit of grease. So most people use their fingers for this, but just put a little bit there. And this just helps to stop it from fusing to the Right, and you rub it in. Okay. okay. Right. Now we're ready for our new disc. So the new discs come oiled because it stops them going rusty. You don't want oil when you break disc. So what you need to do is take the disc out of the bag. See all that oil on there? You don't want that on it because you won't stop. But it'll take a long time to burn it off it that way. So take it out of the bag. <laughs> so you take it out of the bag. <laughs> This is quite slippery at the moment. So we discard of this. So that's a nice clean surface there. So we'll do this surface first and then I'll put it onto that surface. So you get your brake cleaner. There's quite a bit on there. A nice bit of clean tissue, it's not that bit. And you take all the grease off and all the oil. So now we've got a much less slippery surface. Now we can use that surface to put that clean side down. Spray some more brake cleaner and we find a clean bit of tissue there, that's a clean bit, and take it off. Right, I'll degrease my feet. Carries here, so maybe a little bit more of a clean. Just it doesn't really make a lot of difference, but it's just nice to clean it while you can, especially these parts because that's where the little clips sit. Now inspect your sliders, so this part here is a slider, that's sliding really nice. Another one here, that's lovely and clean, 
got some grease on it so that will slide slide well I might just give it a little more because I took it out now that's the part when people say your calipers are seized it's those that, that seize up because they get stuck in the in the hole and your calipers can't move so just a little bit of grease will help that slide up and down and make your caliper free so get a little bit of rubber over that just stops all the dust getting in there lovely now they slide lovely look nice and freely so now we know they're working all right don't sit on your knife <laughs> and you can get in here to pop your camera back on now this is a bit fiddly for me because it's trying to hold everything at once it can be a bit of a faff so bear with me on this one. So what I do is I put the bolt in to there, bring the hole to there, and I can't see what I'm doing. Then we try and find the hole, get it threading in. That's the first one. This side's actually the more difficult one. This side's a good one for left-handed people because everything's left-handed. As you can see, I'm using my left foot, but I'm actually right-footed. So this one's the harder of the sides for me, but the perfect one to film because it shows that even with your wrong digits, you can still do a good job of it. So turn your span around. Amazing that these two little tiny bolts hold the whole braking system on. It's always baffled me. With any car, it's the same. Whether it's a high performance car or a little Nissan Micra, there's two bolts that hold the whole lot together. There we go. That's got. Um, spring washers on as well so they're highly unlikely to come off right now we put the clips back on they slot down in here like that there we go this one is the same on the top So, these have got little clips on these, I don't know if I, I don't normally 
put them on, but I suppose I could. Didn't come with any new ones, so I suppose I better use the old ones. If they are. I'm not really sure if they do anything, but they're there, so I might as well use them. That one's a bit bent. Yeah, strange. One's stuck on. Straighten it back up. Right. New pads. Clean surface. No grease. They don't fit the new pads. Strange. Don't really fit the old pads, are they? <laughs> that one must have been on there. I think someone glued that on because it wouldn't stay on properly. Alright, oh, so we've got the title on that one. Okay. More grease on there. Hard to get through them. Get there. That's it. Put it in now. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a funny little angle there. Get that in. Put these on just because I can. But they didn't come with new ones, so normally if things are needed, they come with new ones. So that's that one. So you've got to do the inside one now, which is a bit, a bit trickier. I've got to find the right pad, so those two are here. 
something without grease on. So yes, they are slightly different inside and outside on these. Because the clips only seem to fit right Not very good fit at all. Lovely. So, if you find this won't really hold very well and you're struggling, like someone's put some blue stuff there to hold that on there. One thing that does work is a bit of grease. I'll remove the blue stuff off. Tiny bit of grease just to Okay, cracked on, snapped on there. So now I'm going to try and get the bugger in. That'll be easy now. Okay. Okay. Now I need a pair of scissors. Get the grease off me. Oh, I've got a knife here, that'll do. Kniffy. Make sure you hold your caliper because you don't want it to fall down and break the pipe and then gently manoeuvre it over the top of your new pads. I think the piston needs pushing back a little bit more. 
Right, so if your piston's not back far enough, I we'll have a special tool here. Always put your knife away. As I found out the other day. Right, so this tool will push your piston back into the so you put that in there you put that in there like that and gently line it up And that's it. That's to the bottom now. Don't breathe in brake dust, and preferably not rust dust either. This does look rusty, but it's good nick. It's not solid, and it's got plenty of miles left in it. That's a bit of wine brush there. So now I push that back, we should have enough space to get the caliper on. Right, got these little bits stick out here, push those back, turn it. ones are right, the top ones. Let's turn them around a bit. Why are you doing that then? Hmm. Put one in a bit far maybe. the problem yes now if you get that problem what it is there's some flat sides on these bits here I've not come across those before so that flat side there on the bottom is turning to the flat there which then allows that to go down enough to let the top one in like that
So rather than keep whacking it with a hammer, we'll always have a look because that was a simple solution. I'd never whack anything anyway, I always just tap it gently just to make sure. Sometimes you can't push by hand, but never beat it. Right, we're on a home run now. The pads are in, the calipers on, the new discs on. We just got Have a look in your tray, make sure there's no spare bits. All I've got now is the wheel bolts and the tools, so I know that these are the last... The last thing you want to do is put everything together and find you're missing something. And that can happen even to the best mechanics. I've had people helping me out with stuff before and they've had to take things apart strip things back down because they've forgotten something so it's not just the amateurs like us that do that which is odd because it's backwards so you actually you feel like you're undoing but you're doing it up because you're looking at it in the backwards way Nip that. There we go. And so I don't know how long I've taken so far to do this, but it's not massive. I mean, it's more time consuming for me because obviously I have to do things a bit differently. But for most people, I'd say it's probably half an hour job. If that, of course you've got the other side to do, so I'd say give yourself an hour. Most of the time spent getting the tools ready and working out what you need, like having to go and find the bar and stuff. Right, so that is that side done. Once I get the spanner off. Spanner off right now. I want to give it a good a bit more of a clean now. Always close your eyes when you blow. Clean tissue. No grease. Dust the crap off. And we get a little bit of brake cleaner again. There's no grease on there now. So, the little old boy won't be going down the road putting his foot down on the brake and going, that bugger, I can't stop. I know there's no grease on those. The car's in park, so you can't turn that. That's it. So now we just put the wheel back on. And I've got to check the brake fluid and then do the other side. Thank you very much for watching. And, uh, if I can do it, just remember if I can do it, anyone can do it. So for someone that's thinking about getting their brakes done, thinking about going to a garage, it really is a very easy job. You've just got to make sure everything's tight, everything's clean, and you don't get any grease anywhere. So literally, that's that's the three golden rules. Is there's no no grease on the discs or pads, no oil. Keep everything as clean as you can, and make sure everything's tight. And you can't go wrong, really. There's one of my top tips. Enjoy yourself. Have fun doing your own breaks. <laughs>